last time you and I talked mm-hmm. on uh, on Zoom, uh, one of the things that you said is that you thought, or you you imagined, you virtually guaranteed you'd be back in Wichita Falls sometime soon. And here yeah. we are. And here we are, yeah. Ten months later, and you're about to be back in Wichita Falls. How how does that feel, um, getting able to play a show in your in your hometown? I'm super glad to be back in, you know, in, in my hometown, Wichita Falls. And, uh, you know, it's been a long time. I think the Lake Pursuit played there six or seven years ago on a St. Patrick's Day thing. Um, there was talk of, of us being there as a full band this fall, but... Uh, I had a feeling when we talked last time that you know that the country thing would be taken off in, in a way that it, it would it would get me there get me back. So I'm glad to be back in one capacity or another, and uh, I'm excited that that people are going to get to see the country show. Uh, second ago when I first got here, um, you you've kind of been touring this this solo country stuff um, for for a chunk of the summer anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, a bunch of shows in Texas, a couple um, uh, Colorado, Tennessee. How have those shows been going? How's the tour been? Everything's been going great. You know, we started the, you know, the country record came out about a year and a half ago. We, we started doing the live band almost exactly a year ago. Our first show with Bree Bagwell at Green Hall, which, you know, I mean, how, how can you beat that? That's, that's a legend. It, she's a legend in, in and of herself. And then, of course, that's a legendary place. Um, yeah, and, and we've been touring around Texas pretty much just it's if I'm not if I'm not on tour with Bowling for Soup, I'm out on weekends playing country, and and we've hit uh, most of Texas and Colorado, Oklahoma, Kansas, on into Tennessee, and, and it's been going really great. You know, I'm, I'm, I I was you know I, at first I felt like I was sort of dipping my toe in, just I I, I didn't know if I really would should be headlining any places because I you know you don't really know if anybody's going to show up, and so. Uh, luckily, people have been showing up, and uh, it's been really good. We're uh, we're having a lot of fun. The band, you know, I, so I just always luck out with personnel. You know, I mean, from everything from Bowling for Soup to our crew and and all of that. But you know, when I picked these guys to be in the band, I don't know, man. I just won the lottery. <laughs> we're just uh, we're firing on all cylinders, and and uh, and and we're having a great time. And that's you know, again, that's. As cliche as it sounds, you know, it still is the main thing about playing music. You know, it's supposed to be fun. How is it different doing, I mean, because, I mean, Bowling for Soup, you're a frontman with a guitar. Country, frontman with a guitar. Uh, but there's got to be, got to be some pretty, pretty marked differences between, you know, a Bowling for Soup set mm-hmm. and um, playing a Jerry Reddick set. Yeah. Um, what, what, what have you noticed those differences to kind of, kind of easy. is it crowd or is it energy on stage what is it i mean in in bowling for soup we're very blessed to know that there's going to be a lot of people there every night you know and uh so it, it's there's just not there's that's that sort of pressure is is all but gone you know we we are so lucky to know <clears throat> every night that there's going to be people there watching singing laughing at our jokes um you know and also we we have 30 years of, of banter back and forth. And so it's a very tight, you know, very tight set. Like, in, you know, everybody knows what everybody's going to do before they do it. And, you know, with the country thing, it's been, uh, it's been an ever evolving thing for the last year of us, you know, learning each other's nuances and, uh, you know, the guy sort of learning my pacing on, and, and honestly me learning how I'm going to pace the show because it's a completely different kind of music, you know, it's it, whereas Bowling for Soup is, Every song, even the ballads, are high energy, and this, you know, you, um, with you know, our our slower songs are are just that. They're slower songs, and uh, but I, I've really come to enjoy certain aspects of the country thing that we don't get in Bowling for Soup. I, I really like the dancing. <laughs> uh, you know that when we play honky tonks, you know there'll be the crowd that's there to see us is all up in front, but then the dancers are in the back and. I really like that. It's 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 something new and it's fun to watch actually while you're while you're up there playing. It's almost like you're being entertained <laughs> while you're entertaining. And um, <clears throat> but you know, I mean, I I admittedly I'm not as dirty. Um, <laughs> the the jokes uh, the jokes I tell on stage or you know messing with the audience or whatever. I am not near as uh it, it's very pg-13 um <laughs> it, it, at a uh, Jarrett ray reddick show you know and um so i am I'm, I'm you know a lot less swear words um 
you know, and uh, of course, I guess it depends on the on the vibe. If we're in a rowdy uh, a rowdy bar set, you never know what you're going to get. But but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the really big difference is um, <clears throat> is just the energy. You know, I, I'll tell you this: uh, I don't eat for about five hours before a Bowling for Soup show because I don't want to burp and you know feel like I'm going to vomit. And with country, you know, they bring in barbecue an hour before, and you're like, oh, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, let's just eat it. And, and uh, you don't have the same, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely not the same, same energy. But, uh, but, but just as fun for me, um, you know, in its own right. Awesome. Um, speaking of rowdy bar settings, Iron Horse, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that might be, a, might be a rowdy one. But um, Hometowns, um, yeah. it's, uh, it's kind of neat. You're, you're doing back-to-back nights. Uh, the 18th in Denton yeah. and the 19th in Wichita Falls. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know just from knowing the band's history for Bowling for Soup yeah. um, that both of those towns have played instrumental parts in uh, in your life and the progress of the band. And they've also both, I'm sure, served as sources of inspiration. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> what what's it feel like to be able to go back to those places? I mean, I, I guess back is relative but yeah. to go to those places that have meant so much to you and that have been such a huge influence on your life and your career yeah the it's you know it worked out so well that i got to play wichita falls and denton back to back you know I, I, I called it my hometowns with the little s on the thing you know it wasn't really until just last week i was driving up to oklahoma for a family thing and uh my wife and i are cruising through wichita falls and i'm pointing out this i'm pointing out that and you pointing out the RV sign and pointing out the world's smallest skyscraper and and you know I point out all these little things and these places we used to go and and I realized that <clears throat> when I left uh, it's exactly like half my life I've lived I lived half my life in Wichita Falls and I've lived half my life down here and uh, it it's it really kind of brought this this weekend into uh, you know it's, it's a really cool thing for me to be able to go back to play Wichita Falls, I've got so many friends coming out that I went to school with, or that I worked with, or that you know I met along the way. There's people that live up here that are from there that are going down there to see me, if that makes sense. Um, and then so, and then you know Denton was, you know Wichita Falls raised us, and then when we moved to Denton it, musically, it just embraced us, and um, you know. It, it just both these cities have been so important in the development of me as a person and uh, Bowling for Soup as a band and and uh, I'm I'm happy that I get to go back to both on the same weekend and uh, and share this music and and um, I'm, we're we're really excited about it. It's going to be good. One of the things that you and I talked about uh, again last time we talked, um, uh, you mentioned that you got a lot of hate both yeah. in the or Bowling for Soup days. Um, and the just, you know, people from Wichita Falls kind of went in and, yeah. and they, they were already um, being kind of salty about the fact that you guys said you were from Denton, even though you had been in Denton for a while yeah. before everything took off, you know? Yeah. Um, and so there's still, we see it in our comments all the time. There's still this perception that um, you guys hate Wichita Falls. I know that's not true, but... Yeah. From from the horse's mouth, set the record straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the I mean, uh, hate was never a thing for which you know it's funny that you know I wrote that song My Hometown and you know th- th- what's really funny about that is in the pop punk genre and what we didn't even realize at the time what I didn't realize as a songwriter was is that that whole like let's get out of our hometown was such a recurrent theme within this whole genre of music that we were in. It was just sort of like you know because that's what that target audience wants to do. They all want to go out to bigger and better things and to to get out of there and to get away from the from the people that make fun of the way that they dress and make fun of the music that they listen to and all of those things. And so, you know, my hometown, the song in particular, was really just a, a thing about go out and see the world. You know, it's 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 it pays tribute to so many things that are in Wichita Falls and and uh, you know, I uh, I'm very very proud of of that song. Actually, I I think um, it hits right to a lot of people. But I can understand how people in Wichita Falls might have seen it uh, a little bit differently. But as far as the 
where we say we're from, we just always said we were from where we lived. Um, and quite frankly, when we were living in Denton, if we were out of Texas, we said we were from Dallas. <laughs> and so, uh, and when we're out of the country, we say we're from Texas. So, you know, I, you know, it's uh, our, the biggest thing is, and, and we have corrected that over the years. We, people, when people say, where are you guys from? We say, we grew up in Wichita Falls, we're from Denton. It's like, because that's where we, where we still reside in Denton County. Um, Chris still lives in Denton. Gary lives in Little Elm. I live here. Um, but, uh, you know, we still call Denton home. That's the home of the band. You know, we're on murals. We're on the Walk of Fame there. Like, it's, you know, it, it just it embraced us. And that's really where, you know, a, a, a lot of people probably don't realize that <clears throat> we were only in Wichita Falls as a band for two years. And then, you know, we've been in Denton since 96. You know, I mean, uh, that's a long time, yeah. you know. And, uh, and again, over, over half my life. So... Um, you know, yeah, but I mean, again, there, there, the, I think, I, I think it probably didn't hurt us, you know, the, the hate that we got. I think it really more just sparked a debate. Um, and, you know, I, I, to, to me, I, I'm okay with people in the comments, you know, saying what they feel and, and all of that, and that's fine. But we never expressed any hatred towards Wichita Falls, you know, I mean, it's, it's definitely not one of those things. There's a picture right behind you hanging up of our very first practice place. Uh, from uh, from uh, over on Ninth and Beverly, and it's it says it right there, which home birthplace of, of Bowling for Soup, Wichita Falls, Texas. I'm very proud of you know the times that we were in the paper when we were coming up and all of that, and uh, you know so uh, I I uh, I'm I'm anxious to if if someone uh, if someone has any doubt, I, I would love for someone to come to the show uh, at the Iron Horse and maybe we can bury the hatchet. <laughs> That's a real good pitch. I love that. <laughs> yeah, you have you have said countless times, just to just to kind of piggyback off of that, mm -hmm. that um, Wichita Falls and growing up in Wichita Falls has been so influential. Yeah. Both with Bowling for Soup, um, but particularly when it comes to country. Um, yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Like, what what are some maybe if if you can think of specifics, what are some specific things you remember? Growing up in Wichita Falls, that have yeah. influenced your, you know, solo country career. Yeah, you know, I that's the thing is, man, I had the best childhood. You know, I I I look back on it, and 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 that's just it. I I I'm really glad I grew up in Wichita Falls because it's a small enough town to where you knew everybody. So you knew everybody from all the other high schools, and you knew everybody from across town. And, and so no matter where you went, you had a friend. Um, but growing up, you know, we uh, our playground was a drainage ditch uh, right there off of off of Kell, and uh, and it it runs parallel to the to the street Prince Edward, and that's that's where we that's where we rode bikes, that's where we played, we played on those railroad tracks, we threw rocks, we there was woods back there that we could dig holes in and build tree houses and go crawdad fishing and and uh, all that just within you know two blocks from my house and. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, country was king, you know, it was, uh, somebody was always coming through, you know, I saw Tammy Wynette, Willie Nelson, um, I mean, gosh, it just goes on and on and on. Jerry Lee Lewis, I saw, um, you know, all that would come through Wichita Falls back then, and, and uh, so, you know, it's just a big part of, of growing up was, you know, the, even the dances you had, like in, in high school, you, had, you know, everybody dressed up like cowboys and went to Roundup. And uh, so, yeah, you know, and our, our mascot was the Raider, and then the guys dressed up like cowboys and ran around. You know, just uh, a very country-influenced childhood, you know. Where, where, and, and I guess I was sort of, as soon as I found heavy metal, I was rebelling against that uh, with, with all my might. But that's part of being a kid, you know. And uh, so, you know, it was always in my roots. You know, I, had a, uh, I have a Willie and Waylon tattoo on my arm, and I sing about that on the record. And uh, I've had that for, you know, I think 20 years now. And so before uh, doing a country band was even a, a twinkle in my eye, uh, you know, that just goes to show you what a, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a country kid um, at heart. Well, you brought it up. I was actually going to ask this because that song, uh, Way More Country Than You, it, yeah. uh, you, you referenced the, the William Whalen tattoos. Um, how many 
Do you know the actual number? Because it changes every time in the song. Do you know, <laughs> do you know the actual number of tattoos? The actual number of tattoos is probably way more than 117. Um, the problem with tattoos is, is when you get them, oftentimes you get one or two at the same time. But plus, sometimes you go in and they don't. You don't really get a tattoo. They just do filler in there, and you're in there for three and a half hours. And really, the only thing that's changed is just the dynamic of it all. Uh, so I don't know exactly how many times I've sat in a tattoo chair, but it's a lot. <laughs> I am uh, I'm a fairly large canvas, <laughs> and uh, most of me is covered. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, I, that's one of my favorite parts of that song about Way More Country is, you know, I start out saying I've got 110 tattoos, but I'm way more country than you. And then it goes to 112, and then by the end it's 117. But what I love about songs like that is you can tell if people in the audience are paying attention. So people might be sitting there having a drink and talking or whatever, and then you'll kind of see them when I say 112, and they're like, well, wait a minute, that's not what he said before. And then when it gets to 117, they sort of get it. And you're like, okay, you know, you up, up from the stage, you can see, you know, that's another thing, I guess, that's different about um, Bowling for Soup versus playing country is, you know, I have to sort of wonder if people are liking it uh, and, and kind of watch for context clues and watch for people's actions and watch to see if anybody's singing along and watch to see if anybody gets the little funny nuances or the little sad nuances in the songs. Whereas in Bowling for Soup, it's essentially a captive audience. They are, there's However many people will fit in the building are there and they're all engaged. You know, it's, it's not something, if there's somebody, you would have to look for the person that isn't. Right. You know, okay. and that's a big, big difference. Looking at the country career, uh, one of the things I saw in uh, pretty recently that I thought was really freaking cool. Uh, so, Texas Country Music Magazine, mm -hmm. they, I, every year, they present their artists that they think people should be watching. And this year, your name was on the list. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was was really awesome to see. Um, how how did you feel once you found out that you were going to be named as one of the artists to watch? Man, I, I found out that I was one of the artists to watch by accident um, from uh, what, Texas Country Music Magazine. The way that I found out was one of the other artists had posted the article and tagged me. And so it just came up on my Instagram and I looked at it and, then I, and I was like, why am I tagged in this? And then... I kind of go down and I go, holy crap, I had no idea that that was even a thing. And I sent it to <clears throat> my promoter and I sent it to my uh, my manager and I'm just like, holy crap, did we know? But no, we had no idea. And so, I mean, I it floored me. You know, I just absolutely, uh, I, I'm, I'm just, it's been so amazing how this, um, how this whole world of, of, of Texas country, how this whole community has embraced me and, and has, Welcome the music. Welcome me as an artist. Welcome my band. You know, uh, you know the radio is playing the songs. The promoters are giving us shows. People are showing up. Um, it's been really cool. And then I just found out a couple of weeks ago that I'm nominated for uh, Texas Country Music Awards Emerging Artist of the Year. And uh, so all of that is just super huge. You know, it's it's funny. It's like Bowling for Soup as successful as we were, we never really were an award-winning band. We didn't really get recognized in, the, in those kind of ways. Um, and uh, so, you know, this is different for me. And uh, I have to admit, I like it. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very rewarding and it's really cool. You know, I, I don't necessarily, it, I don't really care. I, I really do mean this. I don't care if I win because the, the folks that I'm nominated against are all amazing and honestly I didn't realize one or two of them were new um, but because they're they're already so so just blowing up but um, just to be recognized you know and just for the for the community to go oh man this guy you know he we're we're, we're gonna welcome him in it's you know he means what he, you know because I could have easily been taken as a novelty I could have been easily t taken as someone that's just <clears throat> trying to infiltrate their world mm -hmm. You know, and uh, th that's not how it's been seen, and that, that's certainly not what I'm trying to do. And I'm proving that by, you know, getting back in the van, going out there and hustle. We're, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're doing the thing. Yeah, so, I mean, congratulations on that, too. Thank man. you, man. That's fantastic. Thanks. 
Um, so that kind of brings me to talking about um, the future for Jarrett Ray Reddick. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm curious uh, just personally, and if this is something that you can't say yet, yeah, you know, feel free. Um, is there going to be a sophomore Jarrett Ray Reddick album? <laughs> There's definitely going to be a lot more music um, from Jarrett Ray Reddick from the country side of things. Um, in fact, there's stuff in the works right now. Um, I already have some stuff done, uh, and then I have some stuff that I'm going to finish later on this month. I think it'll be a while before I put out a whole record. I think for the next year or so, it'll just be singles or covers or things like that. Simply because Bowling for Soup celebrates 30 years next year and 20 years of a hangover you don't deserve. Um, so, you know, that we're going to be, Bowling for Soup's going to be very busy next year. So I will fill in those gaps with country shows, but try, trying to get in the studio and doing a whole record is going to be tough. So I think probably what that means is, um, like I said, from both Bowling for Soup and from the, and Jarrett Ray Reddick, lots of singles, covers, things like that over the next year and a half. And then in 2025, uh, probably thinking about a new record for both, and um, and it worked out well for me last time. I mean, I did, I did pop drunk snot bread with Bowling for Soup, and then I went pretty much right in after I finished that, and did the country record. And um, and it, Bowling for Soup, it, it just takes so long to get things done. You know, it's it's there. It has to go through so many filters, or whatever. So even if we make a record, it, it doesn't come out for like. 12 to 18 months after we're done with it. Whereas with a country record, I could probably get it out in six. And so, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll just have to see. But I am definitely not done. And, uh, you know, I, I, I hope that, you know, when, when I'm too old to play pop punk and, uh, and nobody wants to hear fart jokes anymore from, uh, from a bunch of fat guys from Wichita Falls, I, I hope that they will still come to my country shows and uh, maybe I'll sneak a fart joke in uh, <laughs> into there and get my fill. But I, I, I just want to play music, you know. I, I, I don't, you know, as I get older, I, I don't intend to slow down. In fact, I feel like I'm more busy now than I was 10 years ago. Uh, and, uh, and I'm going to keep going. Yeah, and this one's going to be easy. Um, when you're back in Wichita Falls, yeah. <laughs> is there a place that... You're thinking you have to go like a Wichita Falls staple that you're like, I gotta eat there. So one of the things about us, and th I think this ties into what why I don't think that you could ever say that we have a bad relationship with with the town because it's all we talk about is is the food that comes from like you know we there is that we will we'll talk. I mean, it doesn't matter where we are. If you put a cheeseburger in front of us, we're like. Okay, but it's not Jeans or Pat's or Ronnie's. It's not Barrel. It's not, you know, it's not. We had, we grew up so spoiled with the best burgers in the world and Sevy's burritos. And there was Freddy's over there, but that was with the red tacos or whatever, which everybody gets crazy over the red tacos, but I'm more of a flour tortilla guy. And so, um, but I gotta say, the mozzarella sticks from Parkway Grill is like I, that's another one of those things that like every single time I get a mozzarella stick it's not that I don't think it's delicious I just don't think it's as delicious nor just the caliber like you could hit somebody with a with a parkway grilled cheese stick you and I'm probably do damage you know like you could probably really hurt somebody with one of those and uh if not that your colon but um I uh yeah there's just so much it's funny and I guess there's a food truck that does Western burgers that, that we used to have at the school. And uh, so, gosh, there's just so much. I'm really trying to keep it super simple. I'm, I want to meet the first. Uh, Eric's, Eric's daughter uh, has the first Bowling for Soup grandbaby. Uh, so I want to meet the first Bowling for Soup grandbaby. That's, that's, a, that's a must uh, with his daughter, Abby. Um, and, uh, and, and I got a bunch of friends that are going to come and say hi. And so... Uh, and so food wise, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to have to play it by ear because there's a lot of choices out there. That's funny. I was, I was praying you said something about Parkway. <laughs> <laughs>